There's finances in the gospel. The good news, there's healing in the gospel. The good news that Jesus died for you, there's salvation. There's the ability to cheat death and live forever and ever and ever when you're not ashamed of the very person who will save your soul. Our Father and our God, we praise you, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for giving us the breath of life. We recognize and realize that somebody laid down last night and did not wake up to see the beauty of this day. So we thank you for favoring us. We thank you for giving us a second chance. No, we messed that one up. We thank you for giving us a third chance. No, we messed that up. Thank you for giving us a fourth chance. No, we messed that up. Father, thank you for giving us another chance. Thank you, Father. You should have killed us when we was in the world. But you saw the value in us. So we thank you. Father, I pray for each individual. Worship me here on our campus here in the Haven, next door in the court. We thank you for our internet church. Father, I pray that you would enhance your word, that you will magnify your word, that you allow your word to pierce, to cut going one way and heal, coming back the next. We need to hear from you, Lord. We're not here playing church. We're not here going through the motions. We are serious about your business. So, Father, meet us here. Father, I pray for that person who may be destitute. Draw them closer to you. Now, Father, have your way. Join us now. Father, as we continue to move forward in the center of your will, join us now and let us teach. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God for you on this first Sunday. Give yourself a hand, praise. You all look good. Over in the court, you look good. Thank you for coming out on this day. To our guests, you should have a blue outline. Would you take out this blue outline? If you don't have a blue outline, raise your hands, and the ushers will get this outline to you. To our guests, this outline is a teaching tool that we use here at Crossword so we can study after we hear the Word. Don't you know the more you read the Word, the more God speaks to you? Don't you know, too many people nowadays are so deep. No, you're never too deep to read God's Word. The more you read it, the more He will reveal it to you. We are in part two of our series, Growing Healthy Relationships. I want to focus on the family today. You must focus on your family. If you truly want to be blessed, you must focus on your family. 1 Timothy 5, verse 8, let's read this together. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those in his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Oh, now that's deep. Read that again. Let me hear you. Hey, Amen. You may be seated. I must focus on my family. We are in this series, Growing Healthy Relationships. We're in this series because I believe that God wants you to grow. And I recognize, and I believe you recognize, that if your relationships are not right, your life will not be right. If your relationships are torn from the floor up, you're going to have challenges in this world. You need good relationships. You need foundational relationships. You need people who will partner with you through thick and thin. You don't need a sometimey friend. You need somebody who will love you when you are good, who will love you when you're bad. You need somebody who will stand with you. You only get a few friends in life that you can really call on. Who will pick up the phone when you call at o'clock in the morning? Those who really love you will answer that phone call. We, we need healthy relationships. We need to understand that it's all about relationships. Last week I opened this, this series talking about moving beyond your past. Some of you are stuck in the past and you can't enjoy the future because of the mistakes you made in the past. You need to learn how to move beyond your past. In other words, you leave your past in the past. That, you know, sometimes you got to move away from some people who keep bringing your past back up. You got to move away from some people who won't allow you to be the new creation in Christ. 
You got to move away from some people until they recognize the Jesus in you. Sometimes you have to move away from some people so you can continue to grow. And once you are strong enough, once you are anointed enough, you can go back and pull them up with you. But don't let anybody beat you up and beat you down and tell you that you have no value. You need to learn how to move beyond your past. Why is it so important? Because all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. Everybody in here has made mistakes. I know we look good on Sunday. We fix it up on Sunday. Everybody in here has had drama in their life. But I want to share with you, I don't care what you've been through. God's not done with you. I want you to understand on this day that God wants you to grow, and that's why we're dealing with this growing, healthy relationships. You're only as strong as those you surround yourself with. I have found that sometimes we surround ourselves with weak people so that we can feel strong even though we are weak also. You need to expand your circle. If you're the smartest person in your circle, your circle is too small. You need to want to grow. That's why you need to move beyond the issues of your life, move beyond the past, because we want you to have a relationship that's going to last forever. The relationship that you should focus on more than anything else is your relationship with Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Jesus Christ is the main relationship you should have. It's Jesus or nothing. It's Jesus or nothing. It's Jesus Christ over in the court online. It's Jesus Christ or nothing. That's why the world's trying to get you to stop saying Jesus. The world's trying to tell you it's offensive when you say Jesus. How about saying the big brother upstairs? How about saying, oh, the guy up in the sky? No, it's Jesus that will cause the demons in your house to tremble. His name is Jesus. Yeshua, his name is Jesus. He's the only way you're going to be able to connect to people on this side of heaven. He's the only way you're going to be able to salvage your family, to restore your family if it's broken. He's the only way you are able to blend your family, to uplift your family. He's the only way is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. See, that's a prayer right there. Sometimes you don't need your Bible. All you need to say is Jesus. You don't need to be so deep that you can quote scriptures frontwards and backwards. All you need to say is Jesus. Get behind me, say, you don't just say Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. When tears are rolling down the side of your face, just say Jesus. We need some more Jesus in this world. We need people who will be willing to give their life for the truth of the gospel. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Because in the gospel, there's freedom. In the gospel, there's deliverance. In the gospel, there's a new life. In the gospel, there's the newness of life. His name is Jesus, and we are going to focus on him forever and ever and ever because it's all about relationships. Say relationships. There's nothing more important than the family relationship. That's why Satan stays camped out in your house. There's nothing more important than the family relationships. That's why families are dysfunctional. There's nothing more important than family. You only get one group of people who look like you. You only get one group of people who share your DNA. And how dare you won't even speak to those who look like you. I don't care what has happened in the past. How about you being a bigger person and say, you know what? I don't know why we're not speaking, but I want to connect to you because we're family. You only get one group of people who share your DNA. If Christ is in you, how about you being that person to turn the corner and say, I love you. Don't even remember why we're not speaking, but I love you because there's nothing more important than family. Say family. In in, in a church this large, there's people at various stages of family life. Some of you are thinking about having a baby. Some of you just had a baby. Some of you have multiple children. Some of you have grown children. You're glad that they are growing out of your house. Some of you love, if you're at my stage in life, you love your grandchildren, but you really love your grandchildren because you can send the rascals home whenever you get ready. Some of you are just happy to have a Christian family. You you have no natural family, but you have a Christian family because in Christ we are family. That's why I encourage you to speak to somebody when you come to the church house. Nobody should be lonely in God's house. That's why you speak to the person that you don't know. Stop hanging out with the people you do know. Extend your hand and say, I don't know you, but I see the Jesus in you. Extend your hand. Say, you know what? I can see you going through. Can I pray for you? Extend your hand and show that we are a true family in this church. We need to understand it's about the Christian family. 
The family is the most important unit in the world. Yes. Without family, without natural family, extended family, or Christian family, you're not going to make it in this world. So I just want to encourage you to be intentional, focusing on the relationships that you have. Be intentional because sometimes you bring that mess upon yourself. And you want to cry yourself to sleep at night. You want to accuse God. But you are the one who made that decision. You are the one who thought that you were God. You are the one who said, I can handle this on my own. You are the one who said, I will connect with this person. Even though the Holy Spirit is telling me, no, I'm going to do me and doing you has gotten you into trouble. But there is still hope. When you trust in the Lord with all of your heart, when you don't rely on your own understandings, then always acknowledge Him, and He will order your steps. He will direct your path. He will connect you to the right people. It's never too late to come to Jesus. It's never too late to change your life. It's never too late to be anointed and used by God. I don't care if you have gray in your hair. That just means you have experience. God is not done with you. Am I talking to anybody right now? Don't you let people stop you from being who God called you to be. It's all about relationships. Say relationships. But the problem is relationships are messy because people are messy. Relationships are messy. It's so true that, that people are messy, but the truth is you're a mess and I'm a mess. You're a mess and I'm a mess. So I know you look good right now, but you're a mess and I'm a mess. Matter of fact, look at the person next to you and tell them, you're a mess. <laughs> Say, I don't know you, I don't know you, but I can tell you are a natural mess. This is how you build relationships. Just tell them, you are a mess. Everybody in here has issues from the pulpit to the pews. Everybody has challenges. And see, the problem is, this is what we don't understand. The more anointed you are, the more challenges you're going to have. See, we have tricked the world into believing that, that I'm so anointed that nothing bothers me. I walk around and the angels follow me. No, the more anointed you are, the more that demon's going to camp out in your house to try to get you to stumble, to try to get you to fall. That's why the Word says, to whom much is given, much is required. Everybody's praying, oh, rain on me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Anoint me, Lord. Don't you know when you are anointed, Satan is right there with you? That's why you got to stay prayed up. We got this thing backwards. Oh, I wish I was like him. I wish I was like her. You had no idea what a person is going through. Because the more that you stand flat foot and say, you know what, it's Jesus, I'm not ashamed, I'm going to let people know that demon's going to try to get you, that demon can't get you, going to attack your children, can't get your children, going to attack your cousins. The more you stand for Jesus, all that negativity comes, that's why you got to stay girded up. That's why you got to stay prayed up. That's why you can't be a sometimey Christian. Uh, a first Sunday Christian, and I'll see you next month on first Sunday. That's not enough. You need Jesus all the time. You need to realize that Jesus is with you wherever you go. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. It's about relationships. God wired us for relationships, but relationships can be messy. That's what caused people to leave the church. It's not Jesus, it's folk. Not folks, folk. That's old country stuff right there. Folks are good. It's the folk that get on your last nerves. It's not Jesus. It's people because relationships are messy. But there's a balance that God wired us for relationships. We need other people. God said himself, it's not good for the man to be alone. It's not good for humanity to be alone. So we got to figure this thing out. You cannot make it by yourself. You're not strong enough. I'm not strong enough. So we need to stop allowing Satan to disconnect us from people because there were some issues, because there were some challenges. But the truth is, what about the messy part? Why it has to be so much mess in my marriage, in my relationship? How, why is it so much mess with my children? What about this messy part? Well, the problem is you're a mess and I'm a mess. We all have issues. We're all going through we all have challenges. Everybody has an issue they're going through right now. 
Everybody has issues. Everybody is half crazy every now and again. <laughs> Praise God, you're not fully crazy, but you just half crazy. Everybody has crazy thoughts and crazy ideas. Everybody in here, you get a thought in your head and it's embarrassing to you. You're like, woo, woo, where did that come from? Woo. No, I, I claim the blood of Jesus. Woo. Everybody has that happen to him. From the pulpit to the pew, everybody has crazy ideas. Everybody's a bit weird. Some of you are a little bit more weird than others. Don't want you to leave the church. We still love on you. Everybody has issues. Everybody. There's no exceptions. Everybody. And you think that you're not connected to this, you're not being honest with yourself. That's what I want you to do. You got to look in the mirror and just be honest with you. It's always easy to blame somebody else, but until you are honest with you, your life is not going to change. Until you say, I'm the one who drank that, I'm the one who smoked that, I'm the one who stole that, until you stop saying, well, it's the man, it's, it's society, it's because I'm black, it's because I'm too tall, it's because I'm too short. Until you own up to your stuff, God can never use you. Just be man enough, be woman enough to say, you know what, it was me. It was me. Even if they got you on something they shouldn't have gotten you on, you got away with the last 10 things. So you ought to say, Lord, I thank you that they didn't give me for all 10. All you got to deal with this one case. Everybody has issues because nobody's normal. Nobody's normal. You're not normal. I'm not normal. Nobody's normal. Everybody has issues. You might look normal on the outside, but on the inside, we have all these emotions, all these things going on. Everybody has to go through this pathway of life. Amen? Amen? Since that's true, what do we need to do before we focus on our relationships? We just need to admit. Just admit that you're the one. Just admit it. It's a, a sad thing to lie to yourself. It's a dangerous thing to lie to yourself. Just admit it. Lord, I apologize. Lord, I want to be better. Lord, now that I know better, I will do better. Just admit it. For the life of me, I don't understand why Christians don't, won't admit it. We play too many games. We want to impress too many people. The only person you have to impress is Jesus. You don't have to impress me. I don't have a heaven or hell to sing you to. You want to be all you can be for Jesus because it's Jesus and nothing. You have to admit your own faults because we want to have growing relationships. If you're not honest with yourself, if you don't have that honest conversation, your life is not going to change. Matter of fact, if you're not honest with yourself, you'll go around criticizing everybody else because you don't want to deal with your own issues. You'll try to throw disparaging words with other people because you want to deflect from what you're doing. So you go around criticizing everybody else like the whole world is wrong and you're the only right one in the world. You have to look in the mirror and say, you know what? I want this to change. I'm going to be aware of my own issues. I want my bad relationships to be made better and I want my good relationships to be made great. If you want that to happen, you have to make it your number one priority. The first thing I'm going to share with you, I'm going to be brief. You have to be, you have to rather make it a priority. You have to make it your number one priority. Say number one priority. Do you ever struggle with priorities in your life? You got so much going on. You're juggling all these balls in the air. You're trying to figure out what you should do. You have to make your relationships number one priority. You have, re, the reason why, because you want people to say good things about you after you leave this earth. Yes. After 19 years of being a pastor, I've done more funerals than I would care to talk about. But one thing I have noticed at funerals, people tell the truth. People are not going to come to the funeral and make up good things to say about you just because it's your funeral. If you are a scoundrel, they're going to say it when you're dead and gone because you can't say anything back. If you are mean-spirited, they're going to say, oh, you know how they are. You know how they were. You know how they used to do. That's why you want to cultivate your relationships so when you leave this earth, your children will have good things to say about you. Your grandchildren will have good things to say about you. Not that you are perfect, but that you love them enough to give them a platform. You love them enough to give them a foundation so they can do better than you were able to do. You have to make it a priority. Say Priority. Priority, priority, priority. We need to get this right. It's right there in the Bible. Jesus was asked a priorities question by a lawyer, a Pharisee who was a lawyer. He tried to trick Jesus. He asked Jesus, what's the greatest commandment in the law? 
At that time, we, we always focused on the T commandments. I share with you, there were 613 commandments. 613 commandments. The Lord asked Jesus, what's the priority? What's the greatest commandment? Hoping that he would not be able to answer the question, and then people would stop following him. Jesus summed it all up. He said the greatest priority, the greatest commandment is that you love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. And the second is like the first commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. Brilliant answer. The first step, love God, Jesus said. Love God. Do you love God? Do you love God? That's very personal. Do you love God? Not based on the prosperity he might send your way. Do you love God? Not based on the house you're praying for. Do you love God? Not based on the car you want to drive. Do you love God? Lord, you saved my soul. That's enough. Anything else is gravy. Lord, I love you in season and out of season. You got to get to that level. Over in the court, you got to get to that level. Time out for going through the motions. Time out for playing church. Time out for coming to one service and walking in when it's half over. Let me put a pin there. Let me, let me just pause right there. I am amazed how we come to church 30 minutes late. I'm amazed. I'm glad you're here, but you didn't miss everything. There's not a person in here who went to see the Avengers who showed up to the movie theater 30 minutes late. Not a one. But we treat God as secondary. We come to church late after the singing, after the giving sometimes. We come to church late, but they want God to bless us now. Make church a priority. This is your getting up in the morning day. This is how I'm going to church with my family to hang out with like-minded folks. You ought to be on time. Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second commandment is like the first, love your neighbor as yourself. Love God, love other people. Love God, love other people. Love God, love other people. If you love God, you will love other people. If you represent God, you will love other people. Again, not just people who look like you or people who agree with you. If you love God, you will cry when you see somebody on the television who's going through. I do it. You see somebody destitute, you see a child that's wounded, you don't say, well, I wonder where the child's parent is. I wonder what that child really did. You see a child going through all across the world, and you start crying because the Spirit of God in you gives you the sympathetic heart to care about somebody else's child. Love God, love other people. That's what the church is about. Love God, love other people. Say, I must love God. Say, I must love other people. Life is all about relationships. It's the number one priority, the number one thing you need to focus on. Why? Because the better your relationships are, the better your life will be. That goes without saying. The better your relationships are, the better your life will be. The better your relationships are, the better your life will be. It doesn't happen by osmosis. It doesn't happen just by itself. It's something you have to do. Maybe you have to make that phone call when you leave here and say, I apologize. It's something you have to do. You have to ask yourself, does anybody really care? Does anybody really care? Does anybody really care about the family unit anymore? I am going to focus on my family. You might have a blended family. Your family might be separated because of divorce, but those are still your children. If they share your DNA, they still belong to you. I don't care who has stepped in to fill the gap. They still belong to you, and you still need to be a part of their life. Because God says, if you don't, you are not of him. First Timothy 5, 8 says it like this. Not my word, God's word. Read it with me. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than the unbelievers. God is saying, in other words, if you're always using his word to beat people up instead of building people up, you're worse than the unbeliever. God's saying that if you are a saved person and you're not doing what he's called you to do, you're worse than somebody who does not know Christ. You're worse because you know better. When you know better, you do better. He's saying you are worse because you know Christ and you still are acting and looking like the world. I'm not talking about being a perfect person, but I'm talking about trying to get it right. Lord, I can't do everything right, but this thing right here, I will get this one right. And once I have success right here, I'll move forward and try to be right here. I'll move forward and try to get this one right. Lord, I can't do it all because I have so much drama in my life, but I make a declaration to you today that I'm going to deal with this one thing, and I'm asking you to meet me here. 
You need to stop beating people up and start building them up. Say, I'll build them up. Stop cursing people. Stop being mean-spirited. And just as a sidebar, that's why I dislike. No, I don't dislike. I actually hate. You say, I can't hate. The Bible says there's seven things, six things, seven things that God hates. So God hates seven things. I figure I can hate one. <laughs> I hate men who put their hands on a woman. Hate you. I love you in the Lord, but I hate you. That's a cowardly act. How dare you put your hand on a woman? Oh, she made me mad. She made me do it. No, that's a coward act. You want to hit somebody, run up on stage and see how that works out for you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on come. You want to hit somebody, run up here, see how that works out for you. I hate a man. She made me mad. She made me angry. So I had to put my hands on her. That if you got to put your hands on the woman you say you love, you had the wrong woman. Or you had the wrong psyche. You had the wrong mindset. You need to understand that you cannot be abusive and call yourself a child of God. Come to church on Sunday smiling and hugging folks and giving people high fives, but then you are mean-spirited and using profanity to your woman, calling her out of her name, putting your hands on her, and got the audacity to come to the to church and say, I'm going to praise God. I love you in the Lord, but I hate your spirit. If you are going through that, Come to the church house, and we'll surround you with some real men who will show you how to be a man. Real men love Jesus. We have brothers here. That's why we have our men's ministry, Iron Sharp and Iron, because we all have gone through a process. You connect with other strong men so you can learn how to be the man that God's called you to be. Now, ladies, I didn't forget about you. All the ladies out there clapping here, oh, yes, oh, oh. Now it's your turn. <laughs> ladies, stop letting any man in your bed because you just want a warm body. Oh, I said it. Stop letting anybody lie in your bed. You just want a warm body. You don't care what they look like. You don't care if they say, I just want a warm body by me. Oh, it's a, it's a tough Sunday right now. I don't want to be lonely. Then buy a dog. Matter of fact, buy yourself a dog and let the other dog go. Woo. Forgive me, Lord. Out the corner of your eye, any man that got his arms like this, he's saying, I don't like him. I don't like him. <laughs> Ladies, you got to make better decisions. I I'm not beating up the victim. I just need for you to make better decisions. I want a warm body. Then buy a heater and put it up on the dresser. <laughs> Let that heat you up until God send you the right man. To God... See you somebody that would really love you. I told this at first service years ago, I counseled a couple, and I'll never forget, the husband said, I just love the way her armpits smell. So, let's pray. That's real love right there. Find somebody who will love you when you're funky. Find somebody who will love you when you're dressed up. Find somebody who loves you just for you. Find somebody that loves you with the wig or without the wig. I'm going to get put out of my own church. <laughs> Decisions. Decisions. The truth is Christianity is fun. But you got to make the right decisions. That's fun in Christianity. We don't believe in being a stuffed up church. And we're so heavenly bound that we're no earthly good. Touch not my anointed. I'm floating through the sanctuary. No, we believe in hanging out with folks. We believe in laughter. I say over and over again, I've been saying it for 19 years, if you can't take a joke, you're not going to say a crossword. Because we believe in joking. People joke with me, joke back with them. We believe in, in borderline playing the dozens. You get that later. You get that later. 
Life is too short for us to be stuffed up, to be stuffy. We want to show the world that there's fun in Christianity, but you have to make decisions about your family. It has to be the highest priority. How do you move things up on the priority list? Real quick, first thing you need to have a plan. Say, I need a plan. I need a plan. It starts with planning. What idea do you have to make your family better? It starts with a plan. Sometimes you got to write it out. We have all these electronic devices. What plan? Are you going to spend more time with your family? Are you going to spend time with your son to teach him how to be a man? Are you going to spend time with your daughter to let her know the type of man she should be looking for? You got to plan it out. If you don't plan it out, somebody else will do it for them. You have to have a plan. Maybe it starts with you coming to church, as I said earlier, more than the first Sunday of the month. Maybe you got to get plugged into Wednesday night Bible study or Wednesday night life groups or our Saturday life groups with the men. We have the women's ministry. We have all these ministries going on so you can plug in. Maybe you just need to go the extra mile and say, you know what, I'm not going to be a Sunday morning Christian. An hour and a half is not enough. An hour and a half on Sunday is not enough because Satan's going to meet you in the parking lot. Satan's going to meet you in the parking lot. I've watched y'all when you leave the parking lot, and because it's hard getting out, you itching up and punking your horn in the church parking lot. Just heard a word, and somebody trying to get in front of you, and you're itching up, stopping them in the church parking lot. Oh, I see it. I see everything. <laughs> An hour and a half message is not enough. You got to work on yourself all the time, over and over again. And then just do them. Doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. Try it. You tried everything else, try this. Just do it and see how God will meet you there. Amen? Make it your top priority. Then secondly, I won't be long. I focus on the little things. I do what? It starts with the little things. Our closest relationships, I must focus on the little things. This is when you make a decision that I'm going to do what it takes to be a better person. This is when you make the decision that I'm going to do what it takes to make sure my family will be better than I was able to be. Every child should be better than their parents. Every child should go to a, a second height, a higher height. You want to give your seed a foundation so they can be better. You say, well, how can I make it better? Sometimes you say, well, I need to do the big things. I got to play catch up. I've been an absentee father. I, I've been an absentee mother. Now I got to do the big thing. I got to get my family together and take them on vacation. I got to get my family together and take them for a weekend in Vegas. No, it's not the big things. It's the little things. A phone call saying I love you. A phone call saying I'm praying for you. A phone call saying I forgive you. You hurt me, but I want you to know that Jesus, I know I forgive you for what you did to me. God has given me peace. That peace that surpasses all understanding. Don't even understand why I'm calling you, but the peace of God is in me. Jesus is in me. I'm extending my hand to you because I want you to know the Jesus that I know. The little things. Say the little things. First Corinthians 13, called the great love chapter, is a great foundation for you to model your life after. It's one of the most beautiful chapters, not just in the Bible, but in all literature. It's absolutely beautiful. In the middle of this list, it lists the little things. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 5, read it with me. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Love does not demand its own. Is anybody in here doing that 100% of the time? Not a one. Not up here, not down there. But this is our goal, to be able to do what this list tells us to do. It says, be patient. Say, be patient. be patient. That's a little thing we all can do. Just be patient. Be patient with people. Allow them room to make mistakes. Allow them room to fall down. Allow them room to even offend you. You're strong enough. They don't know any better. Until they know better, they won't do better. How about just being patient? The same way God was patient with you when you were in the world. God should have killed you, should have killed me a long time ago, but he was patient because he saw your future. You need to start looking, start looking beyond the now and see the future in that husband. See the future in that wife. See the future in that child and just be patient. I know it's difficult. Waiting on somebody to grow, it can be difficult. You've been waiting and waiting and waiting and praying and praying and praying and you don't see any change. Give it over to the Lord. A time for them to change. A time for them to make a decision for themselves. You need to have the practical ideal that I am going to be patient. Why? Why? Because love is patient. Say love is patient. love is patient. 
Also, it says here, love is kind. Say love is kind. It's one thing to, to respect people, but it's another thing to really love that person and be kind to that person. Even when they get on your last nerve, even when they interrupt what you're doing, even when they walk in on you, you're trying to watch the game and you're trying to relax and then they want to interrupt you and, and you get a little attitude. Men, I want to show you how you can save your marriage. You're watching the game, you're watching the, the basketball game, it could be the football game, and your wife walks in and wants to talk to you, and you want to say, you know what, I'm watching the game, they're about to score the winning goal, they're about to shoot the winning shot, but instead of doing that, just pick up the remote and say, pause. We live in a day and age that you can pause live TV. Pause. Sometimes my wife, Pastor Karen, she'll walk in while I'm watching and relaxing, lay back in my easy chair. She'll walk in. She has something to say. I used to feel some type of way inside, but I have learned. When she walks up and she starts talking, I don't even say anything to her. I just say, pause. Yeah, baby. Okay. All right. And then she'll walk away. And I'll start the game again. Then she makes a U-turn. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to pay for this one. <laughs> this remote will save your marriage. Love is kind. Even though you might think it, you shouldn't say it. Even though you might feel a certain way, you don't have to let the other person know. Because you love that person, you let them be who they are. We have to build strong relationships. We have to build strong families. You have to be kind. Say, I need to be kind. We all struggle with this. I get that. But it's not too late for you to change the direction of your family. It's not too late for you to change the destiny of your family. You want people at the end of your life to say, I'm in this position because of what daddy told me, what mama told me, because of what grandmama told me. I'm in this position because my cousins told me that Jesus is real. You need to be kind and love people until they can love Jesus for themselves. And then finally, it says love doesn't keep a record of wrong. Love keeps no record of wrong. I like that. Love keeps no record of when it's been wrong. Let me say it again. Love keeps no record of when it has been wrong. I'm talking about the two people in here that you regurgitate stuff from five years ago and throw it into the conversation. Well, five years ago, you said this. Five years ago, you did that. No, you got to take no record of what you been wrong. Don't keep track of it. Say, Lord, I give it over to you. I'm not going to keep bringing up this mess in my relationship. Amen? Amen. We need to focus on the people who are closest to us. Philippians 2, verse 3 says it like this. Read it with me. When you do things, the little things. Pause. That's real dysfunctional. Pause. Pause. Let's read it like we graduated high school. Let's start over. Read it again. When you do things. I love the scripture. When you do things, the little things, the little things, don't let selfishness or pride be your guide. Instead, be humble, remember what Christ did for you, and give more honor to others than to yourself. It's the winning ticket. It's the winning ticket. It is the winning ticket. God has blessed us here at Crossword. I honor those I come in contact with. People are shocked. Well, you need to sit on the front row. No, I'm good. I'm good sitting in the back. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I, I'm not saying sometimes when you say I'm humble, you're not humble because you said it. But I don't have to be up front. When that's your heart, when that's your spirit, God will put you up front. It's what, that's what the Word says. It's better for you to sit in the back than, for, than allow them to invite you to the front than for you to sit in front and then for them to walk to you and say, you know what, you belong in the back. That's the Word of God. Allow people to elevate you. You don't have to keep promoting yourself. When God is in you, people will see your value. You let God do it. Say that, I'll let God do it. You need to watch out for selfishness and watch out for pride. Those will kill your relationship. Instead, be humble and give more honor to others than to yourself. And finally, I'll let you go. I must never give up on my family. I must what? 
1 Corinthians 13, 7 says, read it with me. Love never gives up. Never. Never lose faith. Always hopeful and endures to every circumstance. Love never gives up. Do you love them? Love never gives up. Do you care about their future? Love never gives up. There is a heaven. There is a hell. That's why the world is trying to confuse our minds. Say there's no place like hell. God wouldn't send anybody to hell. God doesn't send anybody to hell. You make that decision on your own. The world has confused us. We, all, we want to talk about all the good things. Come to the church for all the good things. No, we are human. There will be drama in your life. And the truth is, it's getting worse and worse. We're living in the end times. Nobody wants to talk about that, but we are. It's a clear indication that Jesus is coming back again. Does that stop us from enjoying life right now? No. But we have to recognize that it's not about us. We have to recognize that it's about our children understanding that Jesus is the only one that can give them the ability to cheat death. Jesus is the only one. Jesus is the only one. Jesus is the only one. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the only way you can cheat death. Jesus is the only one who can restore your life. Jesus is the only one who can redeem your life. Jesus is the only one who can give you a do-over. Jesus is the only one who can give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. Jesus is the only one who can heal your mind, body, and soul. Jesus is the only one who can send you somebody who will love you on your good days and your bad days. Jesus is the only one who will meet you where you are and walk you to higher heights. Jesus is the only way you can live forever and ever and ever and ever. Jesus is his name. Jesus is his name. Jesus, Yeshua is his name. Jesus is his name. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus, Jesus, Je Does anybody love Jesus in this place? Does anybody love Jesus in this place? Does anybody love Jesus in this place? Does anybody love Jesus in the court? Does anybody love Jesus in this place? I'm not ashamed to say I'm in love with a man named Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, give God some praise in this place. In the court, praise God right now. On the internet, praise God right now. Give God the glory. He will change your life. He will give you the new lease on your life. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Whatever you're going through, you can pray about it. I'm done, but let me leave you with this. Whatever you do or whatever you go through, you can pray about it. Jesus told his disciples this parable. How do you know if you're giving up? It's right here in Luke 18.1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. How do you know if you're giving up? You're not praying anymore. You say, I'm always going to be like this. You're not praying about it anymore. My family's always going to be dysfunctional. You're not praying about it anymore. I'm always going to be broke. You're not praying about it. My body is not healed. You're not praying about it. How do you know if you've given up? You stop praying. Jesus said you should always pray and not give up. Always pray and not give up. Always pray. Lord, I don't see it happening, but I'm going to keep praying. Lord, I don't feel that it's happening, but I'm going to keep praying. Here I come again, Lord. I'm going to bother you until you heal me. Here I come again, Lord. I'm going to bother you until you bless me. Here I come again, Lord. I'm going to bother you until you get tired of hearing me. Here I come again, Lord. I know that you're able. I'm asking you to be willing. Heal my body. Heal my mind. Bless my family. Bless my finances. Bless my children. Here I come again, Lord. I'm going to bother you until you rain down the blessings from heaven. You will hear my voice until you bless me. Here I come again. We must always pray and never, ever give up. Focus on the family. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. Focus on the family. Next Sunday we're going to lift up mom. Focus on the family. But we should always lift up parents. We should always lift up those who gave you the birth of life. 
We should always lift up those who laid the pathway so that we can make it in this world. I expect to see you next Sunday for Mama's Day. Amen? Never give up. Continue to pray. Our Father and our God, we praise you. We honor you. Father, we just thank you for the practicality of your word. We thank you for kinship, family, relationship. We thank you for those who share our DNA, and we thank you for our spiritual family that we can lean on, we can fellowship with, we can laugh with. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray over that person who may not be saved, I pray that you'll save their soul on this day. Salvation is available. Without salvation, there is no spiritual family. So save them on this day. Salvation, recommitment. Those who are saved but need to recommit to your plan for their life. They've given up hope. Pull them back in. Salvation, recommitment, church membership, baptism. Those who need prayer, church membership. A Christian without a church home is an orphan. Father, increase our bandwidth. Move now by your spirit. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 the gospel